This month we're going to mix a little number sense and some algebraic intuition. We're going to start with this product right here, 27 base 10 times 314 base 5. Now we could take that 314 base 5, convert it into base 10, multiply by 27, but the answer has to be in base 5, so then we'll have to convert that result back to base 5, which can be a real pain. I don't like real pain, so I'm trying to find a smarter way to do this. Now I'm going to try to do this product in base 5, because if we pull off this multiplication in base 5, the answer will be right in the form we want it. So I have to start off by turning that 27 base 10 into base 5. Fortunately, that's not so bad, because 27 is 25 plus 2. 25 is 5 squared. So we have 1 5 squared, no 5s, and 2 units. Here's 27 base 10 written in base 5. We're going to multiply that by 3 1 4 base 5. I'm going to use the dot, because that's way cooler than the x. Now, how do we pull off this product? Well, I know what I do in base 10, 102 times 314, that's 100 times 314 plus 2 times 314. That's just the distributive property. Maybe we can do the same thing here. Write this out as 100 0 base 5 plus 2 base 5. And we're going to multiply that by 314 base 5. Break out the distributive property of 100 0 base 5 times 314 base 5 plus 2 times 314 base 5. Now how do we do this multiplication? We know exactly what we do in base 10, 100 times 314. I put the two zeros at the end, 31400. Zero, zero. Does that work in base 5? Let's see. We'll write this out in terms of powers of 5 and use that distributive property again. We'll write this as 3 times 5 squared plus the 1, 5 plus the four units, and we're going to do the same thing over here with the two. And then we're going to break out our distributive property. Over here, multiply each of these terms by five squared. We'll have three times five squared times five squared. Five squared times five squared is five to the fourth. Five to the first times five squared gives us five cubed, and we have the four units times the five squared. And check this out. If we wrote this out as a base 5 number, we'd have 3 in the 5s in the 4th place, then a 1, then a 4, then a 0 for the 5s, 0 for the units. That's 3, 1, 4, 0, 0, base 5. Just tack the two zeros on at the end. Works in base 5 just like it does in base 10. So when we go over here, we expect this to work in base 5 just like it does in base 10. We're going to double each of these digits here. We're going to get 6, 2, 8. Right? We've got 2 times 3 is 6 times 5 squared. 2 times 1 is 2 times 5 to the 1st. 2 times 4 is 8. But there's no digit 6 in base 5. There's no digit 8 in base 5 either. Ah, I have some more work to do. We're going to clean this up a little bit. 3 times 5 to the 4th. 1, 5 cubed still. We're going to combine the 4 and the 6 here. We're going to call that 10, 5 squareds. Still got our 2 5s. And we still have that 8 units. We're going to do about that 10. Well, 10 is just 2 times 5. So I can take this 10 times 5 squared and write that as 2 times 5 times 5 squared. That's 2 times 5 cubed. That's a lot nicer because there is a digit 2 in base 5. So we can write that 10 times 5 squared is 2 times 5 cubed. We can clean up that 8 out there as well. We can break that 8 up into a 5 and a 3. So this is another 5 and then a 3 in the units. And this is much nicer. We can clean this up a little bit more. We have 3 times 5 to the 4th. Combine the 1 5 cube with the 2 5 cubes. And we get 3 5 cubes. Combine these two, we get 3 5s. And we still have the 3 units out there. And this number is just sitting there staring at us in base 5. We've got 3 5s to the 4ths. We've got 3 5 cubes. We have no 5 squareds. We have 3 5s. And we have 3 units. And there's our answer in base 5, and we're ready for the next problem. And here it is. We want the number of digits in 2 to the 30th. That's ridiculous. I mean, if this 2 were a 10, it'd be a piece of cake. 10 to the 30th, that's a 1. 30 zeros, that's 31 digits. But that's a 2, not a 10. Oh, can't think of anything better, so I'm going to start computing powers of 2. And if I get close to a power of 10, maybe we can work with that. Let's go. 2 to the first, that's 2, then 4, 8, 16, 32, 
64, double that, 128, double that, 256, and 512, 1024. 1024 is really close to 1,000. That's a power of 10 and 2 to the 10th. That's something we can work with because when we cube 2 to the 10th, we get 2 to the 30th. So let's take a closer look at this 1024 equals 2 to the 10th. It tells us that 2 to the 10th is a little bit more than 1,000. 1,000 is 10 cubed. That's a power of 10. So we know that 2 to the 10th is a little more than 10 cubed. But I care about 2 to the 30th. So I'm just going to cube this. 2 to the 10th is bigger than 10 cubed. Then I'm going to cube both sides here. I'm going to get, I know that 2 to the 10th cubed, which is 2 to the 30th, is bigger than 10 cubed cubed. 10 cubed cubed, that gives us 10 to the 9th. Multiply 3 of these, you get 10 to the 9th. So I know that 2 to the 30th is a bit more than a billion. Well, that's great, because I know how many digits are in a billion. There's nine zeros, there's a one, there's 10 digits right there. But how can I be absolutely certain that this is less than 10 billion? Yeah, maybe an extra digit sneaks in there because 1,024 is only a little bit more than 1,000, but it is more than 1,000. So, well, it's more than 1,000. It's less than 2,000. And it's easy to cube 2,002. <laughs> 2,002, 2,000 as well. If I cube this, well, I know that 2 to the 10th is less than 2,000. So if I cube 2 to the 10th, I'm going to get something that's less than a cube of 2,000. If I cube that, well, I cube 2, I get 8. I cube the 10. Hit the third, and I get 10 to the ninth. I have 8 billion over there. So my 2 to the 30th is wedged right between a billion and 8 billion. A billion has 10 digits. 8 billion also has 10 digits. So 2 to the 30th has 10 digits. And I didn't have to compute 2 to the 30th. Thank goodness. Next problem. Here we go. Okay, that's a little scarier. I mean, 2 to the 30th was scary, but this is, this is, this just looks scary. Uh, a little secret for the problems that just look scary, have weird notation, they're usually not quite as bad once you get in there and start playing with it. So that's what we're going to do here. First, we've got this scary thing up here. What does it mean? It means, well, I'm going to take f of n, means take n, stick it in here, and this is what happens. Oh, it just tells me that when n is even, I have it. When n is odd, I square it and add 1. And now what's this down here? Well, this just says I take n, I put it in f, I get something out, I put it in f again, take that out, put it in f again, whatever I get out, put it in f again, I keep on going, I want to see if I ever hit 1. And I have to test each of the values of n from 1 to 100. Well, we know we aren't going to do every single one, but one way to get your head around problems like this is just play with a few of them. Play with a few of them, see what happens. We're going to put in n equals 1. We're going to put that in here. 1 is odd, square it, add 1. It's going to tell us that f of 1 is 2. And our rule right here is we're going to take that out, put it back in again. So we're going to take this 2, stick it back in the function. What happens then? 2 is even, which means we have it, we get back to 1. So sure enough, we start here with n equals 1. Eventually, we do hit 1. n equals 1 works. So let's try n equals 2. Well, we know that works because when we put in 2 for the very first time, boom, we hit 1 right away that works. Maybe they all work. Let's try n equals 3. I want to put in 3. Well, 3 is odd. 3 squared is 9 plus 1 gives us 10. So I'm going to take that 10 out, put it back in, and get f of 10. Well, 10 is even, so we're going to have it. We're going to get 5. 5 is odd, so I get that 5 that comes out. We'll put it back in. 5 squared is 25. Add the 1, we get 26. So I'm going to take that 26 out, put it back in. Oh boy, 26 is even, so we have it, we get 13, 13 is odd, so when we put that in, we're going to square the 13, get 169, add 1, we get 170, and we're going to take 170 is even, we have that, we get 85, 85 is odd, so we square that, add 1, and we get something big, B-I-G. All right, so we have an odd, it goes even, goes odd, goes even, goes odd, goes even, goes odd. And it looks like it's kind of running away. It looks like it's getting bigger and bigger. It doesn't look like we'll ever get back to 1. Now, I'm not sure we'll never get back to 1, but it, mm, I'll put a question mark here. But I'm going to stop this because I don't, <laughs> that big scares me. All right, let's try 4. I still haven't really figured this out yet. If I put in 4, well, 4 is even. We have it, we get 2, and we know what happens Put in 2, we get 1, so 4 works just fine. 5. 
Well, we know what happens with 5 because we did it right here. 5 gives us 26, and 26 gives us 13. 13 gives, seems to run away again. And 6, we know what happens with 6 because the first step is, well, it's even, so we have it. We get 3, and when we put in 3, we get 10, 10, we get 5, 5, we get 26, and off we go. Let's try, see, 6 doesn't probably doesn't work. Let's try 7. If we put in 7, that's odd. 7 squared, 49 plus 1 gives us 50. 50, put that in, it's even, have it, you get 25. 25, 25 squared is 625, add 1, gives us 626. When we put 626 in, we have it, we get 313. And if you think putting 85 give, gives us a big number, putting 313 gives us a ridiculous number, so it looks like 7's not going to work either. But 8 is interesting, because when we put in 8, first step we have it, we get 4. 4 gives us 2, 2 gives us 1, so 8's going to work. 1, 2, 4. 8. Powers of 2. Looks like the powers of 2 will always work, and that makes sense, because if I start with a power of 2, put it in here, I'm going to have it. I'm going to get the next lower power of 2. Put that in, I'm going to have it. Get the next lower, lower power of 2, and keep on going until I hit 1. So I'm always going to hit 1 if I start with a power of 2. And it looks like the other things we tried, 3, 5, 6, 7, that weren't powers of 2, didn't work. Will that always be the case? Well, if we start with something that's not a power of 2, well, if it's even, we're going to keep dividing out the 2's until we hit some odd number other than 1. So what we really want to think about is what happens with these odd numbers? Do these odd numbers always run away? I mean, it looks like we have stick in an odd number, we get an even, then an odd, then an even, then an odd. And it looks like these odd numbers are getting higher and higher, so I'll never get to 1, but is that true? And here's where we have to break out our algebra. We're going to think about what happens here when we start with an odd number. What happens when we have an odd number in here? Well, we're going to look at f of n, which we're going to say is 2k plus 1. That forces it to be odd. And when it's odd, well, we know what to do here. We square it, and we add 1. Use that distributive property again, 2k plus 1 times itself. 2k times 2k, that gives us 4k squared. 2k times 1 gives us 2k, 1 times 2k gives us another 2k, gives us a total of 4k. And we have the extra 1, and then we have the extra 1 that we're adding there. And this gives us 4k squared plus 4k plus 2. That's even. So we expected that. You square an odd number, you add 1, you get an even number. But this also tells us what we're going to get on our next step. When I factor out that 2, we see that not only is this even, but it's 2 times some odd number. So when I go to my next step, when I put this in, back into f, looking at f of f of n now, I can divide off that 2, I'm going to get 2k squared plus 2k plus 1. I'm going to go back to an odd number. Now is that pattern we saw before, odd, even, odd, even. But look at this odd number. We started with 2k plus 1. We put it in here to f. We get this mess here, which is even. We put that in f. We shave off the 2, divide it off, and we get this odd number. Start with 2k plus 1. We get a bigger odd number, that 2k squared that's sitting out there. So any odd number we start with, other than 1, because if we started with n is 1, that means k is 0. If we start with any other odd number, we're just going to keep growing and growing. Every two steps, we're going to end up at a bigger odd number. So we're never going to hit 1. And this explains why. Only the powers of 2 work here. So now our problem is just down to powers of 2 from 1 to 100. We already know the powers of 2. We did that earlier. We started with the 1, then the 2, then the 4, then the 8, then the 16, the 32, and the 64. And then off we go over 100. We've got 7 of them. So we took a little number sense, mixed in a little algebra and some experimentation, and we have our answer.